Hey nerds, what's up? I'm putting this video up on October 31st, so anyone who celebrates Halloween, happy Halloween. And as promised, I'm going to show you guys all 31 prompts of Inktober. I finished them in the sketchbook, so I'm very excited to talk to you guys in depth about what went behind each of these sketches. And so, without further ado, let's get started. So prompt number one was crystal, and if you watched my first Inktober video, I showed a couple of sketches from numbers one through ten. So I'll reiterate what I said in the video, which was, I was very inspired by two things for this illustration. One was sugar skulls from the Day of the Dead, and the other was a specific scene from Disney's The Rescuers, where the little girl Penny and the mice go down into this very creepy, dark, dangerous well to get a diamond that is inside the skull. And I specifically remember the diamond set off like a purple kind of glow or hue. And so that's what inspired uh, the colors of the crystals or the diamonds in this case. And I definitely went more, more my style, more 2D for this. And I was experimenting with alcohol markers, which I've never used before. And it was very, very fun. I really enjoyed how uh, they turned out. And like I said before, my prompts, the way that I limited myself or challenged myself was to do all of my prompts black and white with one primary color inside of them. So I could go from any range uh, between white and black and then one primary color. So for this illustration, it was purple. I also used a white gel pen and that was to add highlights and things to the illustrations, which I think really paid off for a lot of them. So I used Artist Loft alcohol-based markers. You can see I definitely made some messes. And for the range of colors, I went from the lightest into neutral gray to the darkest, which was in 10 black as well as this was the white gel pen that I used, which was Uniball Signo Brand Broad, excuse me, Uniball Signo Broad. So this was the white gel pen I used. Let's move on to number two. I use references for a lot of my prompts, and so you'll see kind of the more realistic versions or realistic style versus my own personal style for specific ones like my number two which was suit and i decided to do a iconic halloween kind of horror-esque character which was american psycho played by christian bale and i thought overall it turned out really well i really like the the different tones and how i was able to really get some contrast into this picture and still be not super detailed, but enough that you can tell what this picture is. Number three, we're back to my style with especially some line art. And I thought for number three with Vessel, what is a more spooky than a Horcrux, which is a vessel of the soul. And I immediately went to Harry Potter and one of the most iconic Horcruxes was Tom Marvolo Riddle's diary. And of course I did it after they have defeated him and put the basilisk tooth inside and the ink is like splurting out. Again, I really thought the mediums that I was using, the alcohol markers really made um, some really good results for my pictures. And the white gel pen also just really makes uh, the ink look shiny and pop. And so I'm very proud of this one. Something you probably notice is that the markers definitely seeped through the paper. And so I used a just standard piece of computer paper and folded it to fit inside the sketchbook and put it behind each sketch that I was working on so that it wouldn't bleed through to the next page. I definitely forgot one or two times to put this piece of paper behind my sketch that I was working on. So there are some unfortunate uh, blemishes, but what can you do? Number four was not, and I went for kind of a visual idea that I had, 
which is linked to anxiety and I definitely deal with some major anxiety and I think a lot of phrases that people use or phrases people use to describe anxiety or bad feelings is having a knot in your stomach. Your stomach is in knots. That's what I was thinking of. And so that's what I visually drew here and it's kind of gross but kind it's cartoonish enough where I'm not too freaked out by it but yeah, I thought it turned out pretty well. Number five was Raven, and I immediately thought of one of the spookiest writers and stories that I definitely grew up hearing about or reading, which is Edgar Allan Poe and the Raven quoth Nevermore. And so I decided to do a little bit of typography and uh, kind of almost like thinking if this was like a tattoo or something. So that's kind of the vibe I was going for. So I drew a raven head and him quoting Nevermore. And this was kind of inspired gothic, obviously gothic handwriting and a little bit of modern uh, with it as well. So I thought it turned out pretty well. I would definitely experiment more with the writing, but I think overall I do like this uh, prompt. So my next prompt is Spirit, and I thought of our spooky boy, Danny Phantom, which I loved the show growing up, and I thought, I you know, I took some creative liberties. This is where I'm really taking the words and starting to contort them to my own desires. So Spirit, Phantom, you know, synonyms, and I just thought of Danny and his special ghost powers, which is like his spidey sense, where he can detect when ghosts come. Again, the gel pen really, I really like what the gel pen did for this kind of effect that makes it look almost see-through. And I really do enjoy this fan art. I actually got to meet Butch Hartman, the creator of Danny Phantom and Fairly Odd Parents, this past weekend. It was very cool. He's such a nice guy. My next prompt was fan, which I, a lot of these prompts, I sometimes would just go for the first thing that comes into my brain because there are 31 prompts and I knew that there are a lot of things to get done. And so for this one, I definitely went with the first thing I thought of, which was more of like a lacy gothic fan. And I thought, well, I don't want to just draw a still life or have the fan uh, by itself. So I thought someone could be holding the fan. Who could be holding the fan? Why a spooky vampire? I thought that would be really nice. And so I really enjoy the pop of red that I put in there. And I think overall the fan turns out pretty nice. The next prompt was watch. And again, I didn't go for the immediate noun, like the object of watch where you tell time, but rather the act of watching and I thought of a very spooky character, the beast from Over the Garden Wall and thinking about how he probably was watching Wirt and Greg throughout the story which in itself is just very creepy so I thought this would work very well. The alcohol markers I think were definitely good. I wish they blended a little bit more but I think overall I don't mind the texture because it really makes it seem like these are trees. So overall, I'm very pleased with this. This next prompt was pressure. And I really took this one to heart. And I was also just not in the best of head spaces at the time. And so I decided to kind of use this prompt as a medium to get you know, anxieties, frustrations out, all of that. So I just drew myself in a really a down position and just wrote a lot of the things that I feel like I deal with and put on myself whether or not that pressure is actually there. So I feel like a lot of us do that where we put a ton of pressure on ourselves. And especially if we go into a into YouTube or putting ourselves out there in a book or a vlog or anything really creative. I feel like that puts so much of ourselves, our soul out there. And so that is like an extra added bit of pressure. But I think there are there are a lot of societal pressures and expectations as well. So this was just kind of what was on my mind at the time. So a heavy one to say the least.
another prompt that dealt with a little bit of typography um, pick was prompt number 10 and I just thought of a guitar peg and a very old song that I would listen to in preparation for Halloween which was a very funny bit by Stephen Lynch on a talk show where he sings the song that's what Halloween means to me and it starts very wholesome and then immediately turns into this very spooky comedy uh, song so that's what I did for number 10. Prompt number 11 was pretty standard. It was sour and I just, I, again, I went for the first thing that popped into my mind, which was like sour types of candy. So I drew some gummy worms. This is supposed to be, I think, like a sour patch airhead, sweet tarts, and um, some other like fruity bit kind of sour candies. Number 12, which was stuck. And I got inspired by this post. This is why I love Instagram and different places on the internet that just, I follow so many art accounts and I had seen this pixelized version of basically the sword in the stone. And I just thought, oh my goodness, a stuck sword. So instead of it being Excalibur, I have a more spooky sword, which if you look, I tried to put in like some skull details onto the hilt and like engraving of the hilt as well as just putting some like purple spooky aura. Apparently according to Disney, if it's purple or green, it usually means a spooky bad vibe. I knew what I was going to do with this prompt as soon as I saw it. Roof. Who better to uh, be perched on your roof than our spooky boy, Batman? And I had to draw the Batman from the Batman animated series by Warner Brothers and produced by Bruce Timm. Childhood show, so good. And this iconic scene at the beginning in the theme song. And I just thought it would work very well for this prompt. Prompt number 14 was Tick and I definitely went for the ticking clock. And I thought of a play that I was in in high school called 13 Past Midnight, which was both kind of a comedy, clue-esque kind of play. And I was one of the main characters as the maid who falls in love with the detective, or at least has a thing for the detective, and they work together to solve the crime. So I just added a very spooky, detailed grandfather clock with the 12 obviously being changed to 13 and I tried to emulate the effect of like a moonbeam or light just hitting the clock this way so that's all you see in the night. By the way, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen all of these prompts and a very short telling of what I did. So if you follow me on Instagram at superblondnerd, you would have seen this content all throughout the month of October. Um, but I also post just uh, extra things during the week. Sometimes I'm getting better at social media. And so anyway, if you follow me, that would be awesome. Thanks. Number 15, I also took some major liberties on with helmet. I thought of what is a spooky helmet? What is an equivalent? And pumpkin heads was definitely something that I went for. And I follow Rachel Maxey. I will put a link to her channel in the description below. And I watched one of her recent, I think it was in September, she re, she went back to her pumpkin head that she had made in 2020 and went to try to make it a little bit cuter, a little bit more Victorian. And so I just used a picture of her as reference and thought it actually turned out really well. So Rachel, if you see this, uh, you're awesome. I love watching your stuff. Anyway, so this is Rachel Maxey. Number 16 was Compass. And this one, I definitely had a couple of iterations in my brain. I knew I wanted to draw like an old fashioned compass and I definitely thought of like pirates and sea creatures and things like that but I thought about maybe doing a compass inside a skull and I thought well I've done a skull before so I just went for a little bit simpler route and just did some spooky 
creepy tentacles, you could think of Cthulhu, you could think of just creatures of the deep. Um, but overall, I also tried to make it look worn, a little bit broken, and I think overall it turned out really well. Again, these alcohol markers really helped make some great contrast and uh, values for each of my black and white illustrations. I definitely felt like a lot of the prompts from 15 on got harder for me for some reason and maybe it was just my steam running out and again just really being challenged by this uh, Inktober challenge. So collide was one that took me a while and then I thought let me just draw a scene of some people colliding. What is the effect of colliding and so I thought of these two cute witches and that they had run into each other with their broomsticks and whether they were paying not paying attention texting because I'm thinking these are more modern witches but you know <laughs> so I think overall they're pretty darn cute and I really enjoyed uh, the outcome of this illustration 18 was definitely simple and I took it literally and just thought of a spooky orange lit moon in the forest and my husband told me that this type of art and this specific illustration made him think of the book series by James Islington, The Shadow of What Was Lost and the continuous books for that in his trilogy. So I was very complimented by that. Loop, I definitely also took some creative liberties on. I didn't, I mean, I honestly thought of a noose and a loop for that, but I thought that's a little dark. So I went for a corn maze and thought of the loops in the corn maze. So we definitely went a little bit more wholesome and happy because I didn't want to draw everything dark, but still relate it to kind of the spooky season. Number 20, Sprout, I definitely thought of what, <laughs> what is a dark and creepy plant? And I thought of the man-eating plant from the cult classic Little Shop of Horrors. And so I definitely went for, again, reference and just uh, trying to get the spookiness of this big old man-eating plant. Fuzzy, I went for a very cute fuzzy creature from Shang-Chi and the Legends of the Ten Rings. I drew Morris, and while he is quite adorable, there is a little sense for me, a little bit of, it's a little bit disturbing, a little bit just off because he has no face, and it's just, it's just enough to like unsettle me. So I, I put him in my spooky rotation as well. 22 was another one that I had a pretty good idea what I wanted to do from the get-go. It was open and I thought of a like a dark hallway or a dark house and you see just a door open just slightly and you can see a shadow within and you just kind of wonder is it a monster? Is it a killer? You know, movies use this a lot in different tropes to either unsettle you and then it's like comedy and it's not a terrible person or it is so it's a very good spooky moment number 23 leak this was one of the prompts that i had forgotten to put my sheet of paper in so if you see up close there's definitely some things i tried to cover with my white ink pen um, but I thought of this adorable little witch who is carrying a cauldron that is slowly leaking some magic and just making the grass grow magically and maybe morphing a little bit. So I just thought this was a very cute prompt. Extinct was another one that I had a pretty good idea of from the beginning and I thought of the iconic scene from the very beginning of Jurassic Park where they are unearthing this velociraptor skeleton and just the positioning and everything is a little bit creepy in itself and so I just decided to draw the skeleton. This one took a while. It was just so detailed but I thought it turned out pretty well. Splat was one that took a while and I had to work away from my alcohol markers because I didn't have one that was in this more lime green color which is what I really wanted for a gelatinous cube from D&D &D. and I mean 
it in itself is both cute, kind of like Morris, but also unsettling because they look harmless, but they will kill you. And so I just thought of how a gelatinous cube can be splatted or, you know, really be amorphous and are hard to defeat. So I definitely went for just more cheaper markers. I used, I think they were crazy art markers. And so Overall, I think it did blend pretty well together. I definitely did some extra layers, but it's not the cleanest and I missed the alcohol markers after this drawing, but overall, I still think it turned out pretty well. Oh, I did not finish this. I'm kind of wondering now if I wanna keep the white eyes or try to add pupils. I like the pupils better. So number 26, I brought my witches back from the collide picture and put it on connect. And I thought it would be cute where they collided into each other, maybe didn't like each other at the beginning and started to connect when they, you know, they're like, I started to create a story with them. And I thought maybe they turned out to be roommates at this like witch school. And so they have to like get along and find out, you know, they both love cats and they have cats and maybe they have similar interests. And so I just thought I would continue the story a little bit. So this is a uh, connect. Prompt number 27, Spark. I went for the mad scientist kind of thought and thought of him like turning on the breaker of some crazy experiment and having sparks and lightning everywhere and I think overall it turned out really well for the kind of composition and picture that I was going for where you just see his very kind of bright eerie smile where he's very excited for his experiment going off and I thought the blue highlights uh, really went well for this so I think overall with the materials that I was using and everything I thought the the result came out pretty well. Crispy was another one that I definitely took liberties on. I thought of lightning striking a old house and maybe catching on fire and that's what made it crispy or even lightning itself is very hot and uh, quick. So I, I think I really enjoy how this turned out uh, overall, especially the lightning. A lot of this was experimenting with alcohol markers. And so overall, I think it turned out really well. And so I was pleased. Prompt 29, patch. I went pretty, pretty basic on this one. Um, thought of a pumpkin patch, drew some pumpkins. This was prompt 29. I was definitely running low on steam at this point. I still, you know, wanted to put some effort in, so I did draw a lot of pumpkins, but is this my favorite? No. Did it get the job done? Yes. Number 30, Slither. I wanted to draw his head a little bit like the basilisk, but I didn't want to actually draw the basilisk. Just a spooky, just a spooky snake. I really don't have a whole lot to say about this. I just wanted to make the composition interesting. Um, yeah. Number 31, the last one, um, I brought my witches back one more time. Um, I definitely think I will focus on them maybe in a story. I don't know. I'm really enjoying their characters, but I thought of risk and I thought one of the witches is trying to do a brew and, you know, they're putting in a ingredient that they're not sure how it's going to mix well with their potion and... So, you know, it's risky. So <laughs> I think overall, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoy these characters again, trying to make some fun looks and it was just fun coming up with different ideas and more story plot for these two witches. But these are my 31 different prompts for the month of October for Inktober. Um, I would love to know what you guys thought of this video. Did you participate in Inktober? Have you participated in an art challenge before? Would you like to see me participate in any other art challenges? Uh, please comment down below. I would love to know that. I think my favorite illustrations out of this month will probably be uh, Rachel Maxey, The Helmet for sure. Uh, Batman. I think that one turned out really well. And probably Danny Phantom. 
Um, I just really like the effect that the lines had and just like the simplicity and fan art of everything. So anyway, thanks so much for watching um, all 31 prompts of Inktober 2021. I hope you guys have an awesome and safe Halloween or just October 31st, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey nerds, what's up? Hey nerds, no. So today's video, all 31 prompts of my, as a promised, what went behind each of these what but very alcohol harm mockers. So for the prompts, I either went based off of I really used references for probably half of my I will put her description and her channel to her the book series by Islinton. Iceland 10, the cult classic. My brain completely went blank. Hold on. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to look this up. Extinct was also another one that I had had a pretty 